Okay, so this is a hello world smart contract uh, following the framework. And um, so a smart contract is a JavaScript module and it exports a start function. And uh, we have not just any JavaScript, we recommend this hardened harden JavaScript. And in fact, we enforce it in various ways um, because ordinary JavaScript, uh, somebody could replace the array.push method and then you'd have this very confusing world to live in. So uh, we don't and, let uh, that happen. Quick Go question ahead. for you, Dan. And um, so in Agoric, you have the secure ECMA script, right? And then mm -hmm. Jesse is like a subset of that. So this contract kind of written in Jesse, so to speak. Yes, is it right? is. In fact, okay. I can I can have the tools check that. Okay. Let's see if I violated Jesse anywhere here. So if I, uh, oh, nice. yeah. So there's a lint profile for Jesse and I happen to be, I, I haven't straight outside of Jesse here. Okay, excellent. Can so you, you just write, briefly go ahead. Enter, yeah, can you briefly describe what Jesse is? I can. Um, so, um, you start with the whole world of messy JavaScript. Right. You take out non-static scoping, things that you know modern programming languages don't have. So you're in strict mode. Um, you take out some uh, stuff that's dangerous that I won't mention. Uh, well, I mean, object capability security is you know what you work on in this uh, CES realm here, or box, if you're familiar with that. Okay, so that um, caller and Kali or syntax and things like that. These are my, mostly globals that you just don't get when you're in Jesse. Um, there's var and this, they're also outside Jesse and class and super, uh, and then proxy and realm and symbol and things like that. And then um, Jesse is this uh, subset of JavaScript that we recommend for, so that humans can write smart contracts, uh, you know, uh, with a chance of getting it right. Cool. So if you know JavaScript, um, you might try using some of those other features that are unavailable, but it seems you could, the learning curve should be somewhat right. fast for figuring out, oh, I, I can't Oops. do it that way. So, um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you're in, in the editor here and you write, uh, what's some syntax that you're not supposed to use? Um, I can't even remember any because my brain is trained this way. Anyway, you'll get red squigglies underneath it, stuff like that. So you get real time feedback. One of the nice things about uh, working in the JavaScript Class. world is, oh, right. So if I write, uh, what's it telling me here? Class is not allowed, Jesse, to find a maker function. Yeah, thanks for cool. the clue. Oh yeah. Write nice more bugs. Write clues. more bugs. <laughs> redefine a whatever whatever uh, Thomas just said about redefining a variable. Uh, so we have mutable variables. You can redefine variables, but you can't do things like uh, if I try to object assign. Now I don't. I might go over time if if I entertain all these questions in in line. I, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Sorry, um, that's that's how we are sometimes. Sure, I don't mind. Uh, that's how we roll. Uh, so um, this is if you just fire up Node, this would work, I think. And then if I say one, two, three, oh, sorry, array.prototype. Yeah, see, so you don't want that. Nice. Right. Uh, but if I do here, if I do that, and if I, oops, uh, yarn test. Uh, 
it'll blow up. Uh, cool. Can't do that. Uh, but if I take this out, if I just run test so that it runs the tests every time I save. So I'm winning. Um, right. So we have JavaScript with this fun little edges around it. Um, and to do a Jesse, or sorry, to do a Zoe smart contract, you export start function and your, your, uh, it gets access to something, but we're not going to use it in this, in this, fun, in this uh, contract. We're going to have a value that we can change that starts with hello world. And uh, we're going to have a public facet, which you, you give out widely, um, and anybody can get the value. But then there's a creator facet, so only the guy who creates, the, you know, who instantiates the contract gets, gets access to the set method and can change it. So then the, the tests, um, we write them with a thing called Ava, which is a reasonably popular testing framework. And then we customize it a little bit. And uh, you make a, Zoe, Zoe, a fake Zoe service for testing purposes. And then you, know, uh, you get the value and you test, it works. And then you set, set it and then sure enough, that worked too. Now, this little E widget here, it might be a little strange. Um, so the uh, the contracts and Zoe and stuff operate in different VATs, and VATs are kind of like um, iframes or something. So uh, this this call here goes between one sort of uh, event loop and another, and what happens is the method and the arguments and stuff get serialized up and sent over to Zoe and come back, and it's done asynchronously. So you get a promise for the result. Um, so we avoid reentrancy hazards there. Um, so that's how the way the distributed computing works. You just have to write E around stuff, and then and for that for the price of that you can go we can go you know, within the same machine or across machines or across blockchains or anything like that. So the asynchronous asynchronous messaging works uh, across the whole fabric. Okay, so that's hello, and then um, but this doesn't have any electronic rights or tokens or money or anything like that. And so here's a slightly more involved contract. Um, oh, that's testing it, sorry. Here we get points for primes. And the way this works is if you can guess the next prime number, you get, um, if you guess the first prime number, you get one point. If you guess the second prime number, you get two points, et cetera. And so um, I actually, got the prime generator out of Stack Overflow, but it was written in Python and JavaScript doesn't have set default. So I had to add set default. This just takes a map and a key. And if the map has that key value, then it returns it. Otherwise it assigns the that key to the default and gives you back the default. And so this is just a, a generator for prime. So um, actually, if I put Jesse check on top of that, I think I won't be able to use generators. Yeah, um, so this is rocket science um, a little bit. So uh, we're, you're kind of advised against it because you might uh, might be difficult to read the smart contract, but uh, you, you can still do it. Um, so that generates primes, believe me. Um, I've tested it and everything. Uh, so that's just ordinary JavaScript programming up, up there. And so now we start our contract. And so earlier we didn't make use of this widget that was passed in. And this is our connection to the Zoe world. This is called the Zoe contract facet. And uh, one of the things you can do is make a mint. So we're, make, we're just making up a new token. Um, I think you called them, anyway, ERC20 token. And it's pretty similar. Um, and, and then we're gonna get a thing called a brand. Um, whenever you make a mint, there's a mint and an issuer and a brand. And a brand is sort of how you recognize this. It's a little bit like the uh, contract address in Ethereum, um, but it's just a JavaScript object. All right, so then we got our generator. And um, when, when the way the, uh, the clients interact with contracts uh, that make offers and stuff like that is an offer handler comes in. Sorry, we have a public facet and then the clients can make an invitation, which is part of this business of composable smart contracts, which I won't even get into. It's a whole other thing. You can 
uh, when you're participating in a contract, you can take your seat in a contract and sell it to somebody and then, you know, so that things compose. So they, on the public facet, they call make invitation. So they get an invitation and then they can make an offer. And when an offer comes in with a guess, um, if they got the guess right, then we mint some, some uh, tokens and give them to them and, and, uh, and we tell them that they won. Otherwise we say guess again. And um, if I hit save, it'll run the tests again. And so we can see that when the guess was two, the guy won and he got one token and the guess three, then the guy won and he got uh, two tokens and then the guess four and nope, that wasn't right. So, they, so that is a little teeny, uh, it's like a faucet where you have to do a little bit of computing <laughs> to, get your, to get your money. Um, so that's a, you know, a 20 or 30 line uh, smart contract. Um, and then we've got auctions and, and um, all kinds of financial instruments built in so that you can just use them instead of having to build them yourself. 